Adaptrator just released their top 10 best play to earn games for April. So we're going to cover it and I'm going to dive into additional data to identify which games you'd want to focus on and which games you can skip. GM, GM to all the new faces and returning strategists. But before we dive into all of the games, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You can lose money with crypto and NFTs. The crypto world moves fast. Always double check the latest updates before making any decisions. Now, let's go over these games. So we're going to dive into this list of their top 10 because I'm going to add in more data so that it makes it easier for you to make decisions on which games to actually focus on. The first game that we're going to look at is Avagachi because they're going to be launching their own chain, the Avagachi chain, as a layer 3 on top of Coinbase's base layer. Now they're going to transform it in what to what they're calling a gaming console, allowing third party teams to build and deploy games on their ecosystem, which could be big if there is adoption. One of the things that you want to look at for Avogachi is they're basically ghosts, Tamagotchis, but built for DeFi and earning. We're going to take a look at one metric that I always like looking at is website traffic. Here you can see that Avogachi's website traffic is about 89,000. That number by itself seems like it could be good but you have to compare it to all the top games when we compare it to all of the top games you can see that all of the top games it falls under off the grid which is a amazing shooter xbox ps playstation pc that's going to be released one of the first console crypto games this falls underneath that so it's not as hyped as all of these other games that we're looking at currently so when we look at that and we look at the Avogachi token. This could be something that you want to get into. You want to monitor the token and look for a better entry potentially. And you look at Avogachi. It's above here as a Mavia and just below games like Big Time. But this is one of those games that I'm just going to be waiting on the side because I don't have any of the NFTs. And I just want to see how the ecosystem plays out and waiting for a play to earn program or something that gets more engagement. Brings us to number two, the Motorverse. This is by Animoca Brands, and it's not just one project. It's combining several racing games. So Rev Racing, formerly E High Voltage, and then MotoGP Ignition. And it's going to be all powered by the Rev token, which I do own. But I've been holding this token for a very long time, back when it was at these levels in previous cycles. And as you can see, it's been at the lows forever. I don't see anything happening anytime soon unless they have a play to earn airdrop that gets people wanting to come back into the ecosystem or brings in massive innovation. But to be honest, when you look at the website traffic, it's not good. Whenever you see this number, it's not a good number. What it means is there's not enough traffic for it to hit over the 5,000 monthly thresholds over the last 28 days. So this is one of those things when I see, I'm just going to wait until it picks up traction. So Rev Racing, as much as I want the token to go up, I'm just not going to participate and I'm just going to wait and monitor on the side. Which brings us to Space Nation number three. This is a long awaited massive space MMO RPG that is releasing its closed beta launch from April 1st to April 22nd, where you can earn OIK tokens. But the caveat is you need to own their NFTs. But the nice thing is, they still have a referral program and there's ways for you to earn the earn tokens. You get to go through this, all of these different steps. You do missions, daily missions, and you earn energy, XP, and orbs. The orbs is what lets you potentially earn their token through their celestial dice game. So you, you redeem the orbs to roll the dice. And then depending on what your dice roll is, you can get prizes like the OIK token as of right now that's one of the only ways to be able to get into this without buying any of the nfts we'll see how the closed beta and if it opens up later but this is just one of those things that i'm monitoring but surprisingly when you look at the website traffic it is at 233,000 in the last 28 days when you compare that to the top games it is just above parallel and parallel is one of the hype games coming up right now so this is one of those things that you just want to keep looking at and keep on monitoring on keep on the side and part potentially participate in the referral program. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave my referral link in the description below. But this is one of those things that I'm just going to be paying attention to. But 
not necessarily buying into the ecosystem because I just want to wait and see what is going to happen next. Which means this is number four, The Beacon, which is a pixelated role-playing game. And they just released their new roadmap last month and has the opportunity to earn whitelist for something called the Writ of Passage, which is their new NFT mint, which allows entry into their ecosystem that gives you multiple benefits. Um, there is a lot to this airdrop and NFT mint and this whole ecosystem I'll be covering in a future video. And I'll leave access to all that information if you want to get ahead of it right now. But basically, Rate of Passage revolves around this new Frontiers quest, which is basically their marketing plan to generate hype leading into Beacon's worldwide launch. You're going to complete quests, you're going to earn prestige points, you're going to boost your chances to secure a whitelist spot for the Rate of Passage, which is an entry into this ecosystem. So this is going to be the first phase, which is going to be open to everyone, and you're going to complete the main quest and be eligible for a whitelist draft to mint your Rit of Passage. Then you're going to complete quests during this phase one to earn prestige points. And the more points that you have, the higher points you have to get drafted. And then you have, once you have your Rit of Passage, you have access to phases two and three. And then again, you're going to complete missions. And then during these different phases, unlock further token allocation and unique rewards. So again, we don't know what it's going to be. It could be inside the game or it could be social based. We'll see what this is. But this is one of those things that I am going to be keeping track of and I'm going to be participating in because this is one of those games that seems interesting. But when you look at the website performance, it is still pretty low at 10,975. When you compare this to all of the different top level games, it's above Decimated and below Treeverse. Treeverse is a highly anticipated game, but there's not that much traction yet. So even though I'm going to be doing this, it's just to participate inside this ecosystem to see how interesting this might become and how it could build up from there. But other than that, if I was just basing this on numbers alone and not the fact that I want to participate in a MMORPG that's pixelated and it, and it looks cool, I would just skip this. And then this brings us to five Nifty Island. I ignored their season one, which I shouldn't have, but luckily season two just launched. And this April, you'll be able to play Nifty Island to earn bigger prize pool of island tokens. This campaign is going to have significantly more tokens, a referral campaign, more community rewards, a new time trial mode, and then user-generated content for those of you who like creating user-generated content. And their play to airdrop, which is for this wave two, season two, is just open. Here's the expo that explains more about it. There are more island rewards for this season. They're going to have a referral program, which they're calling their growth gang. So the more people that you refer, the more that you grow your growth gang, and the bigger that the game gets, the more referral rewards that you get, the more that you can earn. Larger, broader airdrop eligibility and island rewards. And they're just talking about and hyping up that there's going to be, this is going to be larger than the first wave. Then this is the new time trial mode where you can speed run and break targets. And it looks, sounds like there are going to be rewards for the top players as well. And then creators, this is what I mentioned earlier, user generated content in terms of creating your own sword and pistols for being able to create skins and other types of packs, which seems pretty interesting. That might be something that I experiment with. And then new rewards, avatars, weapons, structures, and a reminder that this is going to be over a small number of waves accumulating in Island's token launch for their TGE. So what you're going to want to do, just like Pixels, is be able to participate in all of these different events to get as much of the airdrop as you can before the token releases and then be rewarded with all your efforts. This is definitely one of those things I'm going to be playing because when you dive into the numbers of the website traffic, it's at 446 thousand that is massive when you compare this to all of the other games this is just under big time and just above shrapnel which are two of the biggest web3 games currently so this is one of those games that you want to look into and want to start getting familiar with number six is gonna be world wide web let me save you some time a lot of us played this browser game it was cool in the moment but when you revisit the game currently a lot of land is not worth what it used to be. And when you look at website traffic, 
We all know what this number means. It's below 5,000. I'm just going to wait and ignore this for now until this gets traction and until there's something for us to do. But you're safe with just ignoring this. Brings us to number seven, Theane Arena. I used to play this game a lot. And unfortunately, this is one of those games that didn't pay off with the time put into the game. But what they're doing is they're releasing a new part of the game ecosystem with Theon World. But again, when you look at the website traffic, this used to be in the millions. They lost significant amount of their audience and they're only at 59,000 in the last 28 days. Compare this to all of the top games. This is just above Doogie Dash Unclogged and below what I would consider the most hype games with off the grid being right above it. So this is another game that I'm just not going to be participating in, especially because the way that they structured out the rewards, the token, I didn't like it as well. And there were a massive issue. So I'm just going to be avoiding this, which brings us to number eight, which is also DeFi Mons. Again, with this, let me save you some time. When I looked at the traffic engagement, this is even more terrible. There's not enough data for defimons.com, which is this website that it links you to, but it did rebrand. So what I, one of the things I wanted to look at was looking at Spellboard and then looking at Mon Studios HQ, which is the which is the studio behind it, and seeing how much traction they got. And they're below 5,000 as well. So I'm going to wait until the website has established traffic. I'll be monitoring this to see if it's worth getting into. But at this moment, this is one of those other games I'm ignoring as well. Which brings us to number nine, Chrono Forge, which has been on my previous list. And I have a personal bias for these types of games, MMORPG, that are fantasy-based where you can use magic. This is one of those games I expect to do well because they have a lot of different things coming up. They, they're going to be opening up their play to earn season, which is going to include their Rift token and have a free NFT mint. And this is all taking place on April 10th. Here is the X post that talks about this more. I'll leave this in the description below for those of you who are more are interested in this and want to start diving into the Chrono Forge ecosystem. But basically, there's going to be 6 million Rift prize pool, PvP, play to earn seasons coming. And then you have the ability to mint their free season pass on April 10th. You can expect those different content creators talk about Chrono Forge, but it looks like an amazing game. And there is significant backers in this game. When you look at the website traffic, it's only at 28,000, which is still kind of low when you compare it to all of the different games right now. Just under Oh Baby Games, Oh Baby Games was the one who had Oh Baby Cart, which was one of the most fun games I've ever played. This could mean several things. This could mean that the market isn't interested in Chrono Forge right now, or that this is undervalued. We don't know where this will take off. What this is why one of the this is one of the reasons why I held off on getting the NFTs, but I will be playing the game because it looks like an interesting game. I'm just going to be monitoring this closely to see how the traction, the momentum, the hype builds up and the NFTs themselves have already picked up in value. So I'll be covering all of their ecosystem in a future video because I think it's interesting and there is potential, but there's also risk because there also could be no traction within this project. So this is one of those games that I'm on the fence on, but I want it to succeed because I like the genre and the format. And this brings us to 10 Mirandis, which is a highly anticipated game that was releasing on Gala Games. This was an MMORPG, was something that was extremely ambitious and was one where they're opening up playtests soon where you can earn uh, test MTRM, which is the, the token. And then eventually they're going to be opening up their first playable zone in Q3 of 2024, where you can real, where you can earn real MTRM, which I'm assuming you'll be able to trade for real money and make money in some type of way with this token. One of the things that does surprise me is this does look like a high production game. And based on what I've known from in the past and all the different content I've seen on it, this was a highly anticipated game. But when you dive into the numbers, it's surprisingly low. Miranda's game only has 15,000 followers on X, Twitter, which is pretty low for a highly anticipated game. And then when you dive into the website traffic, we all know what this means by now. It's under 5,000, which means there's not many people going to the website. I usually take 
website traffic as interest from new people in the ecosystem. And this is just something to monitor it's until there we get to actually earn real rewards. There's too many other games with play to airdrops coming up. But for now, this is one of those games that I'm skipping. Maybe I'll come back to it in the future. I'll keep monitoring it from the side, but this is just one of those games that I'm okay with missing out on currently. That is Dap Raider's top 10 best play to earn games. Let me know what you think of their list and the data behind it. What games are you actually excited about and going to play? Let me know if there are other games that you're excited about. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them below and subscribe so you don't miss any of that future content. And if you like this video, check this video out next.